says Biden evoked the same legal authority used by the Trump administration for its asylum ban, which comes under Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act. That provision allows the president to limit entries for certain migrants if their entry is deemed detrimental to the national interest. So for all intents and purposes, they're very similar. Let's go to this. Let's check it out. Uh, and, you know, we're keeping an eye on the American Civil Liberties Union uh, suing the Biden administration over their executive order halting asylum. So what more can you tell us about that? Yeah, and that is something that we were really expecting, right? We were expecting that immigration advocacy groups would really come out and, and sue on this because in their view, they say this goes flies in the face of federal law. It goes against federal immigration law. And they also say, Laura, that it's just way too similar to a policy that President Trump uh, initiated back when he was president that was ultimately struck down by the courts. You have to vote for Joe Biden. If not, we're going to get Donald Trump. If you vote for anybody outside of Joe Biden, you're going to give us Trump. I've been lambasted with this phrase or a variation of the two for months now, right? Being on this channel, being on my Twitter page primarily, I get this all the time. I get this especially from Democratic voters and liberals who tell me every single time, well, if you're going to vote third party, you're voting for Trump. And so you're going to vote in the second coming of Hitler, right? That's what I get told all the time. But then there are stories that come out or policy decisions by Joe Biden that come out, which it reminds me how much Trumpian Joe Biden really is. My question to people is, if I vote for Trump, am I going to get another Joe Biden? If I vote for Biden, am I going to get another Trump? If I vote for a third party, and then either Biden or Trump wins, what's really the difference? That's my question. So I, when it comes to their policies, right? Policies on keeping the tax breaks for the billionaires, which Joe Biden has kept most, pretty much most of Trump's tax breaks. When it comes to Joe Biden's policy on the pandemic, Really, he was no different than Trump, right? Both implemented the jab, both wanted to get people back to work as much as possible and wanted to just end the lockdowns as quickly as possible, Joe Biden too. And both did nothing to truly help those of us that are workers and marginalized in this country during the pandemic to actually stay on a level field. So did they pay us to stay home? No, they did not. Did they cancel rent and mortgages for people while we go through a lockdown? No, he did not. There were so many different things that could have been done, but that weren't, that would have made the lockdowns easier for people to deal with. And it would have been a short period of time, and then we would have just got back to where we needed to. But no. Biden really reflects a lot of what Trump is and does. Also, let's not forget the continuous funding of the police and the growing of the police state. Now we have multiple cop cities that are popping up across the country, right? 
So the similarities to them, the lines between a Joe Biden and a Donald Trump are very blurred. Let me share this with you guys. And I'm going to talk to you guys, especially about the similarities between them in regards to immigration. But before I get to that, I want to share this because this comedian just opposed Biden against Trump. Biden and Trump. Are People are upset with the pretty much the same. So so this is from uh Amer Rahman. So I want to share this. Uh shout out to Amer Rahman for this as well. Let me make sure this is bigger. And full screen it says scratch a liberal and a fascist bleeds. People are upset with Joe Biden. I think because they either don't know or they forget the kinds of things Joe Biden's capable of, right? You might have heard of the 1994 crime bill in the United States, one of the most massive pieces of anti-crime legislation ever passed. Joe Biden was actually one of the people behind that. If you watch the video of Clinton signing it, Biden is one of the first people he hugs. But people forget that Joe Biden was also behind the 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act. And in that legislation, there was something called the 100 to 1 rule. 100 to 1 rule meant if you were caught with any amount of crack cocaine, you would get the same mandatory minimum sentence as 100 times the amount in powder cocaine. Same drug, different forms. So if you got caught with 50 grams of crack, the size of a Snickers bar, you would get the same 10 year minimum prison sentence as someone carrying a five kilo briefcase of powder cocaine. First of all, let's stop there. So let's say, let's say eggs were an illegal substance. And while white people are more likely to have sunny side up, right? Black people were more likely to have scrambled. Now, if I had two scrambled eggs, right, on a plate, that would be, I would get 10 times, I would get 10 times more time in prison for somebody who has sunny side up. So a person who had 200 sunny side up eggs is equal to two scrambled eggs. So a white person who have a plate with 200 sunny side up eggs would get just as much time as me with only two scrambled eggs. Eggs, eggs, just different versions of the egg. That's what Joe Biden did. That's who he is. Might I remind you that do you think somebody like Donald Trump would be against that? Let's continue. White people more likely to use powder cocaine. Black people more likely to use crack cocaine. White people, the vast majority of cocaine users during the war on drugs. But of course, they were not the ones who were caught and arrested, and they were not the ones who filled up the prisons. The president says he wants to wage a war on drugs, but if that's true, what we need is another D-Day, not another Vietnam. The truth is, every major crime bill since 1976 that's come out of this Congress, every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden, on that bill. The Biden anti-crime bills are the toughest in a decade to pass the Senate. They bring all federal agencies, from the FBI to the Defense Department, into a direct attack upon illicit drugs. Delaware's own Joe Biden. 
you must take back the streets. And you take back the streets by more cops, more prisons. It doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter whether or not they had no background that enabled them to become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. So I don't want to ask, what made them do this? They must be taken off the street. Could you hear Donald Trump saying something like that? I could. In fact, he has. So what's the difference? <laughs> the lines are blurred. The lines are blurred. Remember, they're virtually the same age, too. They come from the same, they're cut from the same cloth, essentially. They will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Hang on. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys remember when Donald Trump pushed for the Central Park Five to be executed? He took out an ad. I think it was in the, was it the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times? He took out a full page ad explaining why they should get the death penalty even though it comes out that they were exonerated all five of them and the actual perpetrator of the sexual assault actually came forward and wasn't it Donald Trump that still wanted them to be executed They sound so much alike, don't they? Interesting. That is white power. When you can destroy generations of a community with the stroke of a pen. Joe Biden was one of the most senior Democrats to push the Iraq war. One million dead. This is who we're dealing with. So let's everybody make sure we understand one thing. If there is not a way to secure those weapons of mass destruction, this is an exercise in futility. If we can make the case that the threat is real and dire, that a free and democratic Iraq, if it could be accomplished, could have a cleansing impact on that part of the world and make our life easier significantly down the road if we do things right that it is worth the price opening the gate in a way to the part of the world that needs to at some point on their own come into the 21st century that was a racist statement that was very racist like they need to come into the 21st century as if they're a bunch of savages wasn't it donald trump who also said that during 9-11, he said he saw he saw Muslims cheering for the Twin Towers to go down. So what's the difference? I, I don't see I don't see a difference. Those of you who are voting for Joe Biden, are you guys are you guys voting for a less orange Trump? Kind of scary when you think about it. Let's continue. And then he kind of went quiet in the early 2000s, took a backseat during the Obama years. And then he completely lost it, like really, really lost it, right? My favorite Joe Biden clip is where he turns up to some press conference in Idaho and he's looking for the local congresswoman. 
and he's going, uh, <laughs> Jackie, where's Jackie? Is Jackie here? Jackie? Where's Jackie? Jackie died, bro. Jackie died. She had been dead for a month. He had to apologize to the family. Completely lost his mind. You seen those, uh, you seen those heartwarming TikToks where there's like an old man with Alzheimer's and he's lost his memory and he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't recognize his own family. And then suddenly someone plays his favorite song and he comes back to life. That's what genocide has done for Joe Biden. All right. <laughs> He was lost. He didn't know who he was. Had the chance to green light a second Nagpa, and Joe is back. <laughs> the Wonder Years are back, baby. A lot of people want the Democrats to lose, understandably. A lot of people want the Democrats to be punished and to suffer a historic and humiliating defeat. And white liberals are very tense, right? They're like, is that what you really want? Is that what you really want? You want Trump to come back? You want Trump to win? What I want is for you to not lecture us on how to respond to a genocide you didn't try to stop, okay? You think that's a good idea? You think that's a good idea for your community? Because it's your community that's gonna suffer if Trump comes back. People like you are gonna suffer. What do you think of that? I think that a political system that ultimately makes you choose between genocidal dementia and cheeseburger-powered fake tan Hitler <laughs> is a system worth overthrowing, okay? Maybe that is the conclusion you should be coming to instead of lecturing black and brown people on why they don't worship the Democrats, okay? So that was a juxtaposition between Biden and Trump, right? Uh, the juxtaposition between Biden and Trump is like having a Pizza Hut and a KFC, right? If you don't want KFC, then you got to go Pizza Hut. If you don't want Pizza Hut, you go to KFC. But the people don't realize because you're like, well, I'm going to punish KFC. Let's say you want to punish KFC by going with Pizza Hut or you want to punish Pizza Hut by going with KFC. Either way, you're not punishing the owner because the owner owns both. It's Yum Brands. That's the thing. They're owned by the same company. So the crazy part is that's what a lot of people don't realize is that when you are trying to punish and go for one side or another when they're owned by the same person, right? Then what? Are you really punishing if you go with one of their brands or the other one of their brands? I'm going to punish this bathroom by using the his side versus the her side of the sinks. It doesn't make any sense, right? So that's the issue that a lot of people just do not think about. That the Democratic Party and the, and the Republican Party are two wings of the same bird. How in the world are you going to punish that bird by plucking a couple of feathers from one wing, but you're going to leave the other wing intact? Like, no, it's, it's the same bird. They're still gonna poop on your window. <laughs> so I'm glad I was able to do that because with this juxtaposition that I wanted to frame that with was why I wanted to share this. This is a local article that came out it says President Joe Biden faces first lawsuit over new asylum crackdown at the border. So let's get into this. It says a coalition of immigrant advocacy groups sued the Biden administration on Wednesday over President Joe Biden's recent directive that effectively halts asylum claims at the southern border, saying it differs little from a similar move by the Trump administration that was blocked by the courts said the lawsuit filed by the ACLU and others on behalf of the Las Americas Immigrant Advocacy Center and the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Educational and Legal Services, or RACES, is the first test of the legality of Biden's sweeping crackdown on the border, which came after months of internal White House deliberations and is designed in part to deflect political attacks against the president on his handling of 
immigration. So, as we can see, this sounds like something that people will be going after Trump over. But they're not the same. Come on, baby. Let's use our critical thinking here. It says an order Biden issue that the order Biden issued last week would limit asylum processing once encounters with migrants between ports of entry reached 2,500 per day and went into effect immediately because the latest figures were far higher at about 4,000 daily. The restrictions would be in effect until two weeks after those daily encounter numbers are at or below 1,500 per day, under a seven day average, but it's far from clear when the numbers would dip that low. The last time was July, 2020 during the pandemic. The order went into effect on June 5th and Biden administration officials have said that they expect the record levels, record levels of deportations. So when people talk about, oh my God, Joe Biden's for open borders. Nope, just like Trump. Exactly like Trump. Title 42, title 42, anyone? <laughs> oh, geez. It says, but Abby, you argue that suspending asylum for migrants who don't arrive at a designated port of entry, which the Biden administration is trying to push migrants to do, violates existing federal immigration law among other concerns. It says Biden evoked the same legal authority used by the Trump administration for its asylum ban, which comes under Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act. That provision allows the president to limit entries for certain migrants if their entry is deemed detrimental to the national interest. So, for all intents and purposes, they're very similar. Let's go to this. Let's check it out. So the Biden administration is reportedly expected to announce a new executive order protecting hundreds of thousands of undocumented migrants uh, from deportation. And the new policy is poised to shield spouses of U.S. citizens, offering them work permits and an easier path toward U.S. citizenship. All of this comes after Biden's order that partially shuts off the asylum process in an effort to slow illegal crossings. News Nation's Stephanie Haynes is live in Grand Prairie, Texas, with more on this. You gave us a lot of information last hour. Can't wait to hear more, Stephanie. This all comes as a few months before the election, and we're clicking closer to that date. Yeah. Yeah, every single day gets a little closer, Laura. And so you can really see how President Biden is trying to toe the line here, really balance, you know, beefing up border security with also addressing the needs of immigration advocates and, you know, their issues that they have been raising for years. And so he's expected to announce this program, which will reportedly be called Parole in Place. And what that reportedly entails, Laura, is that there's going to be legal work options for people who have been living in the country uh, illegally. And so they will be able to get work permits and that will prevent them from facing any ramifications, you know, potential deportation, as long as they are working towards getting that full path to U.S. citizenship. And notably, Laura, he's expected, the president is expected to announce this on the 12th anniversary of DACA. That is the program that President, former President Obama uh, started uh, 12 years ago, which was this major uh, protection program for children who were brought to the United States with their parents crossing the border illegally. That protected those children, around 800,000 of them, um, from deportation. So that was a big announcement then. He's doing that, you know, not by coincidence on that same anniversary. Uh, but like any other executive action, Laura, there could be legal challenges. We'll just have to wait and see how that all plays out later in the week. Laura. Yeah. And, you know, we're keeping an eye on the American Civil Liberties Union uh, suing the Biden administration over their executive order halting asylum. So what more can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, and that is something that we were really expecting, right? We were expecting that immigration advocacy groups would really come out and, and sue on this because in their view, they say this goes flies in the face of federal law. It goes against federal immigration law. And they also say, Laura, that it's just way too similar to a policy that President Trump uh, initiated back when he was president that was ultimately struck down by the courts. Now, when you reach out to the Biden administration, DHS, they say, nope, absolutely. This is an executive action that is completely lawful, not only lawful, but in their view, Laura, critical to be beefing up security at the border. And they say it's already having an impact. And so as long as it does that, it will remain in place. Now, by impact, we still have to wait to see those actual numbers. You know, data from the border comes in those seven day averages. So until we get those solid numbers, we may just have to rely on anecdotal evidence of what's happening at the border. Uh, but the other thing I can tell you is, you know, this being an action that, in President Biden's view, is really trying to bolster border security, cut back, or you know, at least deter illegal crossings. There are some um, criticisms from staunch border security uh, supporters and also Republicans who say, "Yeah, this comes a little too late." We just heard from uh, a Border Patrol Council member uh, before in the last hour. He says, "Too little, too late." But also, you know, there are real questions about how, in practice, that this could play out. Out because they raised the issue that there might not be enough law enforcement at the border to, one, detain these people who cross illegally and then also deport them, especially if they are from overseas and from a country with which the United States doesn't have diplom diplomatic relations with, Laura. The crossings across the border by undocumented immigrants, especially ones that are not seeking asylum, well, that are seeking asylum, I should say. Those, the fault actually falls on Joe Biden too. Because who continued that war on drugs? What did we just see? What did we just see? Joe Biden continued the war on drugs, right? And continued to put people in prison, especially people that look like me, right? Over e illegal substances that come from or that's manufactured in some of these countries that are below our southern border. If they had treated addiction to these substances as a health issue rather than a legal issue, then we most likely would not be in this situation in the first place. Nay, if we actually made it decriminalized at the very least, Would these nations that people are fleeing from be destabilized like they are right now? You see, the issue is the illegal crossings at the border would be severely slowed if people didn't have to flee a country that was destabilized. And why is it destabilized? Well, this is where foreign policy and domestic policy converge, right? Because if we didn't have this war on drugs, and also if we weren't trying to control these countries with our puppets in their offices, in their political seats, and if we didn't keep these countries destabilized, then Things would be more stable in those countries, thus making it so that these citizens would not have to leave. And they wouldn't have to risk their life and their kids' lives to come across the southern border to a country that doesn't really want them. Well, some people don't want them, but 
the people who want to exploit them being the capitalist class, oh yeah, they definitely want them because, well, they need somebody to shaft. They need somebody that will work for damn near free. And so this is why you need to pay attention to foreign policy as well as domestic policy because it literally affects you. Black people, especially those of you who may be American descendants of slaves, AKA freedmen. A lot of us are upset because a lot of migrants are being treated better. I put better in air quotes because once they get a job, are they really treated better? Mm -mm, no, not by, their, not by their employers. They're more exploitable actually, but they're treated better than we are by our governments and that causes us to feel resentment because we feel, well, we've been here the entire time and you guys aren't doing that for us, but you're doing more for the migrants. Do you know that's a manipulation tactic? The, the parasite class will, are literally using migrants to pit us against them so that they can keep us fighting against migrants because they don't want us uniting against the parasite class in order to take the system down and rebuild it anew. Do you really think a lot of these migrants really want to come here? They're doing it out of duress. And so I think one of the best things for us to do is to realize that the migrants are not the problem. It's not the illegals problem. They're not the ones that cause this. The ones that cause this is the parasite class, the corporate dictators that actually run our government so that it's all out of our control and we're being used. So there are two victims on either side. You have the migrants that are coming across illegally out of duress because of the destabilization from our country, from our government. And then you have us that are also victims because they're being used to essentially work and be exploited. And then we're the ones that are not getting any of the benefits of being workers. But at the same time, we don't want to be working for these companies because we don't want to be exploited. So, th but then we're left out into the cold. And so the corporate dictators play off of us both. They're playing black people versus brown people. And it's not any different than what the colonizers did especially in African tribes. And here's what they did. What they would do is that they would, they would prop up one African tribe over another. And this would cause resentment between the tribes. And then you have inter-tribal uh, or cross-tribal conflict. So then one tribe would back the colonizer. And then they would get the guns, they would get the resources, the weapons. And so then they would have more power. And so this is the same thing. They are literally trying to pit those of us who are more abundant than melanin against one another. It's just, it's the same old tactic. Same song, different dance. So that's how they do it. Colonizers don't come up with anything new, right? They just remix the same song. So that's why it is important for us to have solidarity with them. Now, do we also still fight for our people and ourselves and what we need? Absolutely. But we don't throw our fellow melanated people under the bus. 
And I think that's important. Now, I want to share, because we're talking about the similarities between Biden and Trump, I want to share something that Trump said. Sounds like something that Biden could say. Biden may say it a little bit more nicely, but it's pretty much the same thing. I will comment. So here's what Donald Trump said. I will comment just quickly on the colleges and universities. It's a shame. I'm so proud of the New York's finest. Uh, they're great. They're great people, too. And so many of them, they're incredible. They did a job at Columbia. And likewise, in uh, Los Angeles, they did a really good job at UCLA. It was uh, very much embedded. And just so you understand, this is the radical left. This is a movement from the left, not from the right. The right is not your problem, despite what like law enforcement likes to say. The FBI director said that he worries about the right. Now, don't worry about the right. The right's fine. Worry about the left, because this is a movement from the left. These are radical left lunatics. And they got to be stopped now, because it's going to go on and on, and it's going to get worse and worse. And, you know, they take over countries, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the corporate parasites. Your buddies, Donald, but go off. And we're not letting them take over the USA. We're not letting the radical left morons take over this country. <laughs> you can't let that happen. Oh, gosh. So he's cheering on the police for stopping students and faculty from protesting genocide. What's the difference between him and Trump? What's the difference between Biden and Trump? So when we talk about the difference between them, one fast, two fast, red fast, blue fast? I mean, and a lot of people will go, well, JB, you can say all that, you can complain, but what answers do you have? When your enemy only tells you there are two options, always realize there is always a third option. Do not let your enemy give you or set the terms for the options. They are your enemy the corporate dictators, the corporate parasites, the parasite class is your enemy. Who are their lackeys? Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Do not let them set the terms. Why are you folding? Do not fold to these maniacs who sit in boardrooms. Don't do it. Therefore, it is up to you to realize that there is a third option. There are third and fourth options. You wanna know who they are? I'll tell you, there are third parties. You could vote for if you're into electoral politics. If you are not into electoral politics and you want to do something different, you can build dual power. What does that mean? That means going outside of the systems in order to help your fellow people so that we don't depend on these capitalist systems. You could do things like joining organizations that do that plant that have farms so that you can feed people outside of the system. You can do things like helping people with in regards to mutual aid by helping them with uh, are you good at computers? Could you help repair their computers so that they don't have to buy another computer from one of these big corporations. Do you know how to prepare a phone? You can even repair their phone, right? Do you, uh, are you good at, uh, or can you transport people without them having to rely on cars and transport? You see, one of the, one of the groups that did this was the Black Panther Party. They built dual power by doing a free breakfast program, but it wasn't just free breakfast programs. They also clothed the people in their community. So 
the clothing manufacturers who were part of the big corporations, they really didn't get, I mean, they were kind of left out, right? Um, think about the, the free clinic that they had. So they were building dual power that way. They also have the fact that the Black Panther Party was also patrolling and keeping their own neighborhood safe, making the police obsolete. The point is, is to make the capitalist system obsolete so that people don't need it anymore. So if you want to go a route outside of electoral politics, go ahead. Or if you want to go somewhere in the middle, guess what? We also have ballot initiatives that to be voted on in many of our states. Here in Florida, we're going to be voting on the legalization of recreational marijuana in November. That's something that you could do. Or you can put up a ballot initiative yourself and push for something that actually benefits us instead of the parasite class. But there are ways. Do not give these parasites an inch. If you vote for Biden, you give the parasites an inch. If you vote for Trump, you give the parasites an inch. It is important to realize that if you want to fight yum brands, you do not go to KFC or you do not go to Pizza Hut because either way you go, you're giving money to yum brands. Same exact thing when it comes to these politicians. And no matter what they say, no matter how much they, they, they tickled your chin, right? They say, oh, well, I'm going to do this. Oh, Me Medicare for all, Green New Deal. Don't fall for it, baby. They're not for you. They're just sloganeering so that you donate to their act blue. Their goal is to empty your bank account so that they can keep the parasites in power. This is why I say Biden equals Trump. That's a hard truth. Are you prepared to talk about it? Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.